it is good to be back onto the tracks after a couple of months of busy work. Finally, we could get back to our regular routine. Over the past, we could consider ourselves as professional campers, but really, we have somewhat lost our professionalism after a few months off the tracks. I tell ya, we literally took a few hours to pack our gear, and this was only an understatement. In this trip, we have to learn to become professional campers again. We thought of something very simple, so we just cruised through some forest tracks and finished in a local beach back in our hometown, Albany. What a beautiful day today! I really miss camping a lot and uh, it's been a few months I don't know what to say really um, yeah I mean look at this beautiful place this is a place in Kent River and uh, the good thing is we've been blessed with a few good few, uh, few fine days and um, so we are here this is very close to Albany uh, and we're not doing anything crazy this time no expedition no um, no mud tracks no nothing like that but um, we just want to enjoy it's very close within half an hour drive and uh, so we end up this this Kent River it's a bit of a bit of a uh, what, what do you call this? I don't know what to say, really. I've lost all my words. This is Kent River. This is where we started this journey to find out the meaning of professional camping. Before that, let's start with some driving. That is rather fun, but not too technical. This could be the initial test of my newest off-road performance addition in my car, a rear differential lock. From now on, my car is finally twin-locked, a front non-selectable auto locker and a rear selectable air activated locker. This ensures all four wheels rotate equally and eliminates any possible wheel spin as you can see, the four tires gripped effectively, even one of the front wheels was lifted. After we had enough fun, we quickly proceed to our first designated camp before the sun goes down. Finally, we found camp uh, that is in a, basically in a state forest area near Albany. This is not a bad spot. Um, well, people use this as furnitures apparently. And check this out. This is my uh, what is this, King's Swag Daddy Deluxe. It's actually not a bad one. Uh, but I have to tell you, 
I've only been using these, or I haven't even used once, but I've been setting it up, practicing for a couple of times. That clip is broken. Um, that clip is broken too. And also, at the time I unboxed the King's Swag, that fell out from the box. So three clips are broken, but it shouldn't really affect the way I use it. So I'll sort of let it go. And now we're going to prepare our meal for the night. What is better to wake up in such a quiet and fine morning? Who knows, there is such a lovely place in such a short distance from home. We stayed in a camp for quite a bit. After all, camping is all about laziness and escape, isn't it? I thought it might be a good opportunity to explain my philosophy. Alright, good morning. This is after the first night of uh, camping in this spot very close to Albany, our hometown. So part of this small adventure is to, um, to restore our professionalism of camping. So what is professional camping? Hmm. In my opinion, firstly it needs to be happy, happy camping, happy wife, happy, happy life. And um, to do that, things need to be uh, convenient. So if, it, if things are not convenient, if it takes an hour or two to set up a camp, nah, not happy. Um, and sometimes it has to be a good balance as well. Uh, if things are really fast, but it offset the, um, it compromises lots of things. For example, vehicle weight, things like rooftop tent. Yes, it could be uh, potentially a pretty fast setup in camp, very convenient. But thinking about having another 40 to 50 kilograms or even more on a car, it's not really ideal. Things like this, very nice, it gives you hot water in a minute or two, and you can have a nice coffee in the morning. How good is that? I suppose, um, Other things you need to consider is about resources usage. Professional camping requires minimum amount of resources, such as water. You only use small amount of water every time, and obviously we're talking about small, smallest usable amount of water. Um, too much obviously is a waste stage, but too little, things are not clean. And uh, to do that, you probably you, you can it, it can be easily uh, achieved because you can nowadays we have uh, garden hoses attachments, and the garden hoses attachments comes with the uh, spray uh, different options, different selections of uh, um, I don't know how do you, how do you call that outlet the spray the, the shower head I suppose you can turn it to mist. Uh, when you don't want you don't want much water, if you need to fill up something, you can turn it to shower and it fills fill up in no time. Uh, yes, camping can be very professional. Um, for for someone like us, goes camping every at least once a month. Um, we're expecting ourselves to to pack up everything at home in 
say within half an hour and I consider this as professional camping uh, when you hit a campsite you set up yourself probably within 15 minutes that's that's a really good timing um, you have your own rubbish you, I mean you have your own rubbish carrying um, just say rubbish bag so you don't leave the campsite a mess and um, and also part of that is a, a bit of a vehicle setup as well um, a vehicle setup in a way that gives you convenience fast uh, something that you need to get quickly is in a place that is very convenient things that you don't really need as often goes inside a little bit deeper so you can't well you don't really have to get it so it's not really relevant to to uh, to be convenient things like this awning needs to be very convenient and for me this 30 kilograms awning is a bit of a trade-off uh, but I really like this addition because obviously it gives, it gives me a convenience it gives me a, an area of shade uh, it's just uh, I think it, it is really the best item I've got in my uh, in my possession and I mean showering showering on sweet um, wife's happy I'm happy So this is what I think as professional camping. Tell me what you think. Comment down below. And I, uh, I reckon part of camping as well, uh, you need to be able to manage the um, outdoor elements. You have to be able to toughen up and get used to things. Um, <clears throat> for example, in Australia, we have this really precious element flies how do you live with heaps of flies but they're flying around in your head um, I suppose <clears throat> for me I I or I'm obviously not the only one the, having 10 flies flying around your head is very very annoying especially when you are trying to do something your hands are not free you can't get them away and in the same time, when it, when it has an offery, they're flying around your head like that. They're your darling. I suppose that is a problem of season. Usually in the beginning of summer or, or in the middle of spring, that's when all these insects... That's when the, all these insects uh, sort of come out. And I suppose they mate. I'm not sure I could be wrong but that's when we see most flies uh, so maybe try to avoid coming out in that season it could be a very bad season to come out really because of that reason um, and under this weather this is basically uh, I reckon after the middle of summer we don't have many flies we may get a few mozzies but uh, it is much better than a couple of months ago. Uh, you get heaps of sand flies, heaps of glow flies. They all bite you, and not to mention a storm of mozzies at night time. And um, it's pretty hard to go, even with insect repellents. Also, you have to have the right gear to do your uh, your type of camping. As you may know, there are different types of camping. It could be a very luxury type glamping, we call it. So, for me, that's not a professional camping. Um, but obviously, that is up to you. My type of camping involves uh, going to the bush, going to places where things are not supported. You have to, uh, you have to be self-sufficient. Um, with your own water, electrics, your uh, freezing, your fridge system, I suppose, and uh, <clears throat> your, your own shelter. So that is the type of camping uh, we, are, we, are, we are looking for. And well, obviously, you, you can go for things like glamping, and uh, you have to do a little bit more research about the area, 
whether it has the resources you have you, you need um, but it's okay if you if you if you like glamping that's that's what you like um, but in in my situation I have to prepare my own stuff and uh, put things in the right order so I won't get pissed off when I have to use my resources I suppose when you plan for a camping trip you have to select the right season and this could be a big argument between two different groups because some people reckon going out in winter well winter in Australia is a wet season is it? it is yeah it's a wet season and I really prefer going into the bush in wet season uh, <clears throat> because it's nicer it's warmer generally in the bush in wet season uh, but the thing about wet season is uh, you tend to get a bit of muddy forward driving when you uh, when when it is in winter time uh, especially in, in the forest um, and sometimes that's that's some people that's what people don't like uh, but there are all there is also another 50 percent of the people who likes this sort of stuff uh, and then in, in that case I, I I assume it is a bit of a uh, the intention why why do you go there uh, if you if you go there to just mess up the tracks uh, because it's muddy it's wet it's fun uh, it's, it's not that appropriate I suppose but if you are uh, if your intention is to go through that track go to go through that place uh, with the, uh, the the easiest approach I suppose then why not it is nice it's warmer in in the bush and it's nicer not many insects in uh, in winter um, so I think it's a pretty nice time to go oh plus you can some in some places you can have campfire and that completes the whole camping experience uh, or summertime you can argue uh, you go to the beach the beach is nice because you tend to get a bit of breeze in summer uh, and generally in the beach is cooler in summer compared to the forest but it could also mean the beach is really really hot without winds in the day that the beach has no winds it can be a, a bit of a nightmare to pack up uh, especially you have to close the awning and put things in your back and then not to mention there are heaps of flies flying around your head uh, yeah that could be a horrible experience so plan your trip, um, set your waypoints, go, if you haven't, well part of planning may involve a lot of exploring, uh, you may have to get one of your mates who doesn't mind waiting, who doesn't mind getting lost in, a, in the tracks, um, to plan your trips, to plan your waypoints, and so after that, after, after several times of exploration you may be able to find some nice tracks and and put them all together and and become an uh, an adventure and expedition thank you for watching if you haven't already done so please subscribe you can also find us on facebook and instagram at 4x4adventurewa i will see you in part two